correlation coefficients. Look at the trend of the pattern, then look to see if the scatter plot is a completely linear pattern. Select from the drop down menu that this is a negative correlation, so it's one of these bottom three, and the fact that they all lie on the same straight line makes it perfect. A perfect negative correlation. This one is scattered, but the trend is moving upwards. They're quite far apart from each other, so we're going to call this a weak positive correlation. Again, this is negative. All of the points lie on the same straight line, so it's a perfect negative correlation. Next topic, find growth or decay percentage. When you see an exponential function, the value in the A position, or in front of the parentheses, right here, is the initial value. The number inside the parentheses is growth or decay. If the number is greater than 1, then it's growth. If the number is less than 1, then it's decay. So for us, this number is less than 1. There is 0.31 left over. So if I take that away from 1.00, I get 6.69, which is a percent of decrease of 69%. So I'm going to say over here, I'm going to say that this is decay because it's less than 1. And then I'm going to subtract this number from 100. Let's do that again. The number inside the parentheses is the growth or decay. This is less than 1, so it is decay. It is 0.5 hundredths, or 5%, less than 1. So it is a decrease of 5%. This number is above 1, so I don't need to subtract it from anything. So it's 0.04, so that is a growth of 4%. Anything after the decimal point is your growth growth of 4%. All right, so this one here has three digits. So when we convert percentages from decimals, the decimal will move two place values to the right. So the decimal point will move two place values going between the two and the five, giving me a growth of 32.5%. Okay, next topic. Linear inequality system solved graphically. My two systems are isolated for y, so I can simply graph them by using my slope and y-intercept. The first one has a y-intercept of negative 7, and then from there I'm going to click down 1, 2, 3 units, down and positive 1 unit to the right. I'm going to choose my solid line, and now I'm going to shade above. So I want to change my shading, and that is what I want. So next I'm going to move to positive 5. So positive 5 is my y-intercept, and my slope is 1 over 1. Up 1, right 1. This one needs a dotted line, so click Change Line, and now I need to shade below. Click this again, and there is my shaded area. This blue section to the right is the solution area. Purple section is not a solution. Green section is not a solution. Anything on this dotted line is not a solution. Anything in this blue shaded region is a point that satisfies both inequalities. So you can pick anything here. I'm going to pick the point 6, 2. 6, 2. Again, one more time. Start at the y-intercept, negative 8. Then graph your slope, which is 2 or 2 over 1. Negative 8, up 2 over 1. Solid line, shaded above. Second line, positive 6. Slope is negative 1 third. You only have one negative sign, so that goes down 1, but not negative 3. You use the negative sign. So down 1 and positive 3. This one needs a dotted line and a shading above. So click it twice and pick a point in this double shaded region. I'm going to pick the point negative 1, 8. Negative 1, 8. 
All right, solve a trinomial by factoring. So first, your trinomial will need to be written in standard form, so you could start using your diamond pattern. So I'm gonna move this over and this over. So my x squared stays the same, my minus two x will come left, and my minus seven will combine with my minus one, giving me minus eight. So I'm looking for something that multiplies to negative eight, but adds to negative two. So that's negative four, positive two. My factors are positive four, I'm sorry, positive two and negative four. Don't forget that equals zero. And don't forget that the multiplication property of zero states that either this factor is equal to zero or the second factor is equal to zero. Solve for x, solve for x, and you get your two answers, negative two and four. Those are braces, not parentheses. Negative two, positive four. Oops. Negative, negative two. Once I click my comma, it will put the braces for me. Again, one more time, make sure it's written in standard form. I'm gonna keep my x squared positive, so this is gonna combine when it comes over as a positive 3x, and this will come over as a negative 28. x squared minus 3x minus 28. Don't forget your equals zero. Something that multiplies to negative 28 but adds to negative three is negative seven and four. So my factors are four and negative seven, and don't forget that your roots or your solutions are always the opposite of your factors. Always the opposite of your factors. So negative four, positive seven. Negative four, positive seven. Type that in, negative four comma seven. All right, that's it for this video.